here. So my doctorate's from the School of Hard Knocks, and uh, which is fine, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, today we're going to talk about um, uh, uh, the first three um, programs uh, leaned heavily on FamilySearch.org, and uh, there's nothing wrong with FamilySearch.org, but uh, the biggest problem with it is the limitation of having to drive to, as I, I, I said last time, I, that I've repeated this a thousand times, if you remember nothing else from this series of lectures, it's that they limit you to a family history center or a affiliate library. So that makes it difficult sometimes to do things from home. Um, the Antonati, it's, that's kind of gotten to be its um, shorthand name. And uh, it's, it's a website, basically, of the Italian um, uh, provincial archives, which is tied to family search, but not enough to put, make one big site out of it. But the good news is that you don't. Uh, you can do whatever they show um, on, on, on the Antonati, Portale Antonati site, you can do from anywhere. So, um, so if you're trying to find a record and you can't get it at home and you want to get a copy right away, then you want to run over to this website and see if you can find it. It's very, very, very different than Family Search, and it seems to change uh, the uh, screens a lot. So I don't even honestly know if my handout, which I made two weeks ago, is going to match up exactly with what the screens are. So. Uh, we may have to do a little bit of um, uh, liquid paper on some of this handout and see how it goes. So basically, these are physically the same records that Family Search has and that Antonati has. Um, it, should, it would be nice if there'd be, hey, we've got some stuff that's different or older or newer than Family Search or whatever. Um, if you go, for example, if you go to the uh, Newberry Library, they've got certain things in their collection specifically because they don't want to have exactly the same things as the Chicago History Museum, formerly the Chicago Historical Society. So those two, um, not related, not necessarily related to genealogy, but those two institutions have kind of worked together so that they don't waste money duplicating each other's collections. So it would kind of be nice if. Family Search and Antonati would do that, but no, they're. I think the the Antonati group is taking advantage of Family Search, filming all these records, and then cleaning up digitally the images the best they can. Um, so that's sort of the uh, the way it works together, but it's a completely different um, interface and. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm partial to the family search interface over this one, but maybe this is, it, I'm also partial to the Apple phone over the Android. It doesn't, it's all up to what you got used to, you know. I'm partial to MS-DOS uh, as a computer language, so that, okay, you know. Everyone's going, wow, that's, that's before anybody knew who Bill Gates was, right. Um, that's my that's my degree, not a doctorate, but my degrees in computer science. Thank goodness, at least I'm comfortable with it enough to be able to give these talks. So anyway, you don't use AOL, do you? Huh? Pardon? You don't use AOL, do you? Uh, not even. I, I used to use Prodigy before AOL. I gave my AOL account to my dad, who you know he can just open his email. That's about it. All right, so uh, let's get started here. Um, so like I say, the records, when I say the records are the same, it means they are the same physical images that were filmed. Um, one of the problems with our image sets that we work with is that they're not necessarily the originals. What I mean by that is when you, if you, first off, if you were in Italy, and you walked into the civil records office, which is where these records are kept. The first thing is that you're gonna say, can I get a copy of my grandfather's birth record and here's the date and here's everything. 
they're going to say, yes, we have that. No, you can't have a copy of it. And you're going to be like, I flew all the way to Italy. And they said no. The reason why is because of Italian law. They will take the record that's in front of them, and then they will handwrite an extract. It's called estrato. And any of you who've written to Italy and gotten a record back from them, that's probably what you got. You didn't, even though it would be within the era of the Xerox machine, hey, just take the book, put it on the Xerox machine, and send it. They, by law, they can't do that. Now, how does that, why is it that we can make copies of these original records from Family Search and Antonati, and they can't? Ours is not to reason why. <laughs> okay. So, but the, but the issue is, is that they're written at the local town level. But now when Family Search went over to Italy to make the arrangements to film them, they found out that these records were then copied. And when I, I don't mean on a Xerox machine, I mean somebody had to rewrite them by hand and send a copy to the provincial archive, which is what Antonati and Family Search get their records from. So I don't know I, I don't know about your school experience, but I remember having to write things a hundred times a lot. Um, because I was too 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 chatty. Uh, my third grade teacher threatened to staple my lips shut. <laughs> Scared the out of me. Uh, I think she still wants to stay on my list. At any rate, um, so um, where was I going with this? Um, so you, um, well, I'll come back to it. I'm, I'm spinning the long way around the barn, as someone would say. Um, let's just let's get back to Antonati, and I can do my little funny jokes later on. Now, right now. The screen you are, I'm presuming you're seeing, I can't twist my neck back that far, says it's in Italian, but over here where it says Italiano, now I've got a huge um, pointer for my lousy eyesight, but Italiano, and you can see we have English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. So you have any number of choices of how you want to experience this website. But what you're going to find out is that some of the screens are going to change back to Italian on you and you didn't ask them to. Just be, be advised for that and then you may have to go back up here and change the language again. And of course English, that tiny little flag is of course the British flag. It's nothing to do with King Charles. That's just in, in, in Italy when they think talking in English, it's British English. So. At any rate, so the, the site is in many, many languages, and you see that it's changed. Now, the, the English words that replace the Italian words are sometimes not quite what one would expect as a direct translation. So honestly, if you're more comfortable working with this in Italian, you know you're in the native uh, language. I would just go with it. Um, now, search registries and search by name. Those are the two choices that you have for the data that's in this website. There's a bunch of other stuff in here, but if I talk about the family stories and the photos and things, we're gonna get way off track and it won't necessarily help you with your research. So I'm gonna focus on the records that they have. And keep in mind that they are not, it is not a one-to-one -one matchup between this and family search. In other words, they don't have every record from Family Search on this website, um, and but Family Search pretty much, they say they have digitized, so they've made it as an image for you to view, in uh, all everything that they have up till now, is digitized. Now they've got issues with some records being missing, some records being unreadable. And some of those are not available for us to even look at at a family's history center because they're working on what they can do to make those better. So rather than let us see them lousy, they take them away from us altogether. Okay. Um, so you might run into that on Family Search. If you run into that on Family Search, it's almost a guarantee you're not going to see much of it on, on Tanati either. Um, so searching the registries is basically finding the town the record type, and the year. I've talked about that in some of the other talks. So this site focuses you on that better than family search. It's one of the plus sides of that, of, of Antonati. 
is that I say, I want a marriage record from this town in 1881, okay? That's all you're gonna get to when you're in here, as opposed to, I've got this film number. It's got a bunch of different towns, a bunch of different years. This one kind of gets you directly into it. Um, search by name. I'm going to tell you right now that you're going to have kind of the same problem here as that we have on Family Search, and that is that very few records for Italy have been properly indexed. Uh, it's because the formats change, and um, the way they do the indexing on Family Search, and that's what you know, Antonati is like. Okay, you guys handle all that stuff, and then we'll, as a sharing thing, we'll put it on our our site here. Um, so you go to search for the names, and very few of them are available. We'll do some name searches, but I think it's mostly, if it's searchable on Family Search, it's searchable here, maybe, okay? So but we're going to talk about the registries, because it's a very, very different interface than what you were used to if you've worked with Family Search. And again, I, I'm not trying to negate anything. You just may be, um, you may be, be more comfortable with this. And uh, that's all well and good. So search the registries. Now they give you, I don't know if you can see the shaded word location and the shaded word year and the shaded word typology. That's the record type, okay? So I'm gonna be focusing very heavily on my good old town, mostly because I know what the results are going to be when I search for it, but we might call out a couple of other towns here and just see what comes up. So this is that was supposed to pop up with the name in quotes, and it didn't. So I'm going to say, let's see, all right, so great-grandma was married in, um, well, okay, 1878, great-great-grandma. Um, there, there seems to be very little on this site that's after 1900, which is unfortunate. We need, we need stuff. You know, we're starting out here. We have to get back to our whoever was born in Italy, parents, grandparents, uh, any of us in this room. If you're born in Italy, you're probably not going to find your records online because it's too soon. It's, it's not available by uh, privacy laws, and uh, that's another issue. Is um, no matter what is available, a birth record after 1920 or so, you're not going to see it on either Family Search or Antonati. I, I, the law is about 100 years, I believe. Uh, however, they don't just update it like, oh, today it's May 27th, so we'll add the May 27th, 1923 birth records. It doesn't work like that. They update <clears throat> a couple of years. Every couple of years is what it kind of looks like. Um, so typology, now you, no matter what this page says in English, you gotta type that in Italian or it doesn't see it. No, that's, a, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the school of art, genealogy knocks. Okay, so if I say births and I search registries, it says no. Actually, this is the first time I've seen the no results found in English. Usually it's, yeah. you know, and um, do I want to carry out a new search? You bet. Now you see up here it's in English, and right below there's frequently asked questions, and it's all in Italian. So they, they, they haven't translated everything yet. So we're going to go back and do this again. So 1878... Now I want I do want to show you actually I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to just search without a typology so you can see all the choices actually I'm going to search without the year as well so you can see all the different possible choices of things the way this site works is that on the left hand side you've got things that can be used to filter what happens over here on the right hand side so right now we have 60 pages of results. Do you want to sit and weed through 60 pages of results? I know I don't. I'm not known for my patience, as my coworkers will attest, um, and my third grade teacher, as it turns out. So, so we're gonna go to the left here, and we're gonna see the things that are gonna help us find 
what we want. Now it says archive, archivio di stato di body. Okay, so the first, the first step is that if you type in a town name, if I typed in Carbonara and I left it blank, um, I'm gonna have multiple uh, archives here because there are multiple Carbonaras in different provinces. So that's one step is to say, okay, I wanna click only on <coughs> Archivio di Stato di Bari if you're like me and you're looking for a Carbonara Bari record. But in this case, there's only one Trajano in all of Italy. Um, well, it says, I, I'm not even sure what bonds means. Sorry, it's okay. Okay. So, but it gives us multiple choices. They break the records down by Napoleonic records. So those are the really early ones, 1809 to 1815 or so. The restoration and then Italian civil records. You know, I don't want to play with where they came from. I'm looking for a year, okay? As I, I know I got told you guys in the first speech, um, don't just start throwing darts all over the room and you're gonna put a couple through the window and one's gonna hit the cat. You don't wanna do any of that stuff. Focus on, it's from the uh, young Frankenstein, I couldn't help it, you know. <laughs> you know. So you wanna do a, um, you wanna limit, like what am I looking for? I'm looking for a marriage record for my great-great-grandparents and the oldest child was born in 1879, so I want to start going backwards, basically. So, series here, they're all Trajano because I typed that in. Location, they're all Trajano because I typed that in. These numbers are how many records are listed underneath. And again, it was 60 pages of 10. So now we get typology, and it gives you a bunch of them, and then it says expand. Let's take a look at that. Okay. So these are all the different possible types of records you could run into. Um, I need to explain here that there are some inconsistencies in this website. And again, I'm not meaning to pick on it, but you need to know what's going on. One of the techniques you need to use is that if you don't have the ability to search for a name, you have to um, go to the index, and you need to find the index first. When we get to the bigger handout, we're going to talk about indexes a little more than we did in the earlier talks, and you're going to see all the different formats from 1809 until the, I'll say the present, but the 1930s. Um, so within here, uh, I'm going to skip the ones that are a little less important. They're not going to help you genealogically, but I'm just going to explain what the record types are and then why is it got an index on only... For example, uh, diversi. That's not a street. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's it's a type of record that includes. It, it predates 1865, and it includes uh, stillbirths. It includes uh, births of children whose parents gave them up to the orphanage or the church. My great great grandfather is one of those. Um, and uh, there's a couple of other types, but they're, it's diverse acts, meaning it doesn't fit the other categories. <coughs> now down here, we, we have 54 Ati diversis, and we have one diversity index. That means that the other diversities have their own index tied in with the records themselves. Why do they do it like this? I don't know. But just be advised that if you're looking for a record in Antonati, Step one is what type of record? Go to the indexes first and see if that year index is cataloged in here under the index. And if it's not, then you back up and you go to the record. I'll explain again in a minute. So marriages, 117 marriages. Um, we're not going to talk about Aligati quite yet. 13 marriage index. Why those in index? I don't know. I'm going to click on that. So somehow they combined 1813 and 14 as one index. 42, 43, 49, 50, 51, 64, 65, 66, and 75, and then it continued. Why did they do it this way? I don't know. Um, but if the year you're looking for, and I'm looking for 1878, and in this particular instance, 
Okay, the 79, 81, and 87. It, it, it doesn't make sense um, why they did it that way. So, But you need to search there first because you're going to go to your records and you're going to go to the beginning of the 1878 marriages and maybe there won't be an index there. And you're going to go to the end of the 1878 marriages and there won't be an index there either. And you're going to be, what do I got to do? I got to go through one by one? Now, if that's all you can do, that's all you can do. Um, but check for these indexes first. Very important, okay? Now, let me go back to the typology. So, we have marriage indexes. Memorandum, I've never found anything useful there. Notificazioni. Processetti, I'm pronouncing it probably wrong. Now, there should be more of these because I know there are four years worth. Processetti is the same as Alaga. Oh, I see, they combine them in one lump. See, they're even combining the years together. It's, it's, it's inconsistent. Um, at least you, what's it doing? Okay. At least in Family Search, it's by film number, and you can see in the catalog. It covers this year through this year. Okay. So you get, you get to know exactly what it's doing. This time it, it's combining them when it doesn't have to. Um, matrimoni Publicazioni, those are the bands. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, they, they even have, some of them have their own index. <laughs> so deaths, 125. Again, Allegati is its own talk. Um, but see, death index, 17 of them. So that means 108 of them, the deaths are with the, the index is with the deaths, and 17 of them. It's separately cataloged. It's not both to get both. It's either or. Births 131. Birth index 29. Okay. So just th this is kind of a layout of the kinds of records this thing has. And again, if you type in the word marriage, you're not going to get any results at all. Like I type births and I got nothing. So, so I'm looking for an 1878 marriage. My first step, remind me, it's to check the indexes first. Well, we already did that. We did not see 1878 in there. Okay? So I can now go to matrimony. And now I've limited my results. It says 117 results, Trajano, typology matrimony. If I want to start over and say, no, nah, I don't want to do marriages today. I want to go to deaths. You click the X, and it'll make that go away. And now your filters have been turned off. Okay? So, but I'm going to leave it on. Now over here, year. Why are these out of order? I don't know. <laughs> Expand. Now they're in order. So, okay, this is, all right. So they've added 30 through 35. That's new. That wasn't there a couple weeks ago. That's a good thing. So marriage is going to that late date. I'm gonna have to check these because 1930 to 35 on Family Search, you you can't view from home. So I'm gonna click 1932, even though that's not what I'm here to do. I just want to see it comes up. Okay, cool. So 30 through 35. If you try to do it from a family, even a family history center doesn't like me to look at those. So that's cool. That's not what I was here to show you. But anyway, expand the year. And I said, I'm going to search 1878. Now, you see, some of these have more than one listed with them. Three and two and one, 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 and two. And someone, this one's got, I, the one I want to, well, okay, it's after the one I want to look at. It's got four. Um, for whatever reason, they made separate files, so you have to go through multiple files to look at them. But we'll go through one by itself. So... Now it's changed back to Italian. I'm gonna hit English. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting little note. I hit English and it got rid of what I was searching for. Good to know. Well, we're gonna do this in Italian then. So, so I have now limited. Now, I, I, I made a lot of points last time to say uh, when you're in a family search film, you gotta look at the record to figure out Am I in the right town? Because there might be more than one town on a film. Are you in the right record type? Because there might be more than one record type on a film. And certainly there's more than one year. 
I hope you don't have to research a town where one film of 3,000 images is one year. Or <laughs> that would, that would, well, that would be very bad. Yeah. I've, got to be, I've got to be nice in, in this room, nice crowd. I don't want to say nasty words, or my third grade teacher will, you know, maybe that's what I, I must have swore. I don't know what happened there. I've, I've blocked it out. So this comes up with a whole bunch of, let's see where we're at. These are searches by name. We'll come back to that. Okay. So we got a lot of little itty bitty icons, and they're explained all in the handout. So we have up here, so it says Archivo di Stato di Bari. We know that. <coughs> Stato Civile Italiano. This is after, this is 1878, so yes. And it's the town. So I don't have to worry about, am I in the right town, the right record type? I narrow that down with the filter here. So it, it works. What you don't get is that film number and image number thing that I told everybody. Make sure when you're in family search and you find something, write down the film number, write down the image number. Even if you, because you could do that at home. You could search this stuff at home and then, but not look at the images. You could do the search of the index. On, and on Antonati, you can do anything. There's no restriction part. So I'm, at, I'm on the first page, and these down here, we've got a plus, a minus, and a reset zoom. So we can make this nice and big. So 1878, Trujano Bari Registro de Atti di Matrimonio. And so, okay. So this is your title page. This is probably what you will see first on anything you select. Now, unfortunately, it's they've shaded these to the point where you can barely see them if there's anything. I'm going to reset the zoom. That's how it came up. Um, so down here, now if you really want to go one by one, and maybe the marriage is in January, why not? Why go through the trouble of finding the index? So I'm going to hit this big right arrow. We got a right arrow and a shaded left arrow because I can't go to the left. I'm on image number one. You see one out of 44, page one here. So ah, we do have the index first. Okay, can you all read that? <laughs> no. So, so we're going to see what a marriage index looks like. These are this is what they're going to look like for probably all of you from 1866 through 19 whatever you've got records for, okay? Let me zoom in just a little bit more if it will let, I don't think it will. Okay, so as with most of these indexes, now here, you've got an up and down scroll bar here on the right which takes the entire screen up and down but you have to click on the image and drag it to be able to get to the whole page. Okay, so just be careful of that because you're going to say, well, how come I can't go any further? It's because of that. So, uh, as an example, luckily it starts with an A. So, we got a name, Adante. We've got another Adante, we've got an Ardito, and another Adante. Is that in order? No, it's not. It's in, it's the A's are grouped together, and then the numbers on the right, 9, 27, 49, and 50. So the numbers are in sequential order for the A's, and then the A's are just sort of lumped together in there. Now you gotta watch sometimes if the name starts with D-I, or DE or LO or LA once in a while, they're going to lump that under the thing that comes after the DI or the DE sometimes. So if you don't, if you look for yours and you don't find it, now in this particular case, we've got a De Santis, Signor Francesco. They got money and land. Um, <laughs> And uh, Signora Filomena, I don't know what I don't know that name because that's she's not from our town. But anyway, so point is that this is how these in indexes are going to be. Are they indexed both by male and female for the marriages? No, they are not. Grooms only. 
patriarchal society, whatever you want to call it, but it's simpler this way anyway. So all the A. So when you're looking for a marriage, you got to look for the groom. Um, I don't see any parents here. Do you see any parents here? There are none. Sometimes you will see them in your marriage index, and that's good. But, you know, the thing with the marriage index is that if you find both names of a couple, yeah, you pretty much probably found the right marriage. I've got, I think I had one family, and I was working with a distant cousin, and she says, this is all screwed up. I've got the same couple married twice, 30 years apart. <laughs> they did not renew their vows. That's not what that was. Uh, the first wife, Mariana Ancona, died. And this guy married a different, unrelated Mariana Ancona. <laughs> I found both marriages. I sent them to her. I said, you got different parents of Mariana, not of him. He's a widow, widower. Yeah, okay, but over, over the thousands upon thousands of records that I've tripped over in my getting my PhD in the School of Hard Knocks. That's, that's the one time I remember an exact duplicate couple and, and the same guy, I mean the actual same man. So I, he just, he didn't want to change the monograms on the towels, I guess. <laughs> would you see a note in there that would say that the individual was a widow or a widower or something like that in, in the record, right? It'll be within the record, yes. Okay. I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, what I'm going to show you how to get through these with Antonati as a, you know, and that's in the one handout. And as long as I'm in here, I'm going to show you a little bit of what the records look like um, that, that's really in the other, the bigger um, handout. But you need to see the indexes first so that when you're looking through this, it doesn't matter whether you're looking with Family Search or this web or, or Antonati, uh, you need to know how the indexes are going to be. They won't be a different index in the two different sites. These are exactly the same um, records. Now, something to explain over here in the C's. You have Antonio Carbonara and Rosa Maria Acetura. And you do see that the surnames are listed first, first names are listed second. And it's number three. So why did they go from 37 to 42 to 55 to three? It's because at the end of each main set of records is a group called Parte Secondo, and there might be a Part 2A, 2B, 2C. These are people from this town who maybe got married in a different town. That's very important for you because you're going to be, hey, I know, I know where they were born, I think, or I know where they died, or they died in Chicago, and where the heck did they you know, get married. So you're going to go to the regular town looking for it, and it turns that you know the, the the choice of where to get married in Italy if they if the husband bride and groom are from two different towns is frequently that they ended up where the bride's father lived, not necessarily where the bride was born. That's the obvious. You see, you, if you see enough of these marriages, you say, oh well, sh the groom was born in Trigiano, the bride was born in Montrone. Okay. So therefore, they must have gotten married in Montroni. That's going to be right probably 95% of the time. But the problem is that uh, if the father has moved to a third town to work, that's where this all has to take place. So that you might get thrown off a little bit by, by that. But the good news is that that kind of a diversion to another town might be recorded in the Parte Secundo uh, records. The only bad part is they're written in long hand, word by word by word. Basically, uh, well, basically every record is people came to the mayor's office to tell him about an event that happened in his town. And then here's the event. That's the basic format of any genealogy record. The problem with the Parte Secundo records is people came to the mayor of this town to tell him that an event happened in a different town and it was recorded on a different piece of paper and here's all the details of that piece of paper. That's good for us. If you want to go back to the other town and get the regular record, you can now go do that. Um, do not expect to find Chicago marriages in the Italian records. You won't trip over that. I, 
I, I, I can see that there are a couple of, oh, okay, yeah, no, they won't be there. Uh, they might get some debts. I think I told you about my great-grandfather dying on uh, Ellis Island. So, at any rate, um, let's look a little bit at some of these. Some of these buttons don't work, or they didn't when I was testing them. There's supposed to be a rotate right and a rotate left. I can't zoom, can't really, I don't know, maybe I can zoom in so you can see what the buttons look like bigger. Okay, it may have pushed them down, but that's okay, it makes them bigger. So, I, this didn't work last time and it's not working this time either. Oh, that, it doesn't go right, it goes left, okay. Is that gonna help you? <laughs> Doubtful, but if you have a record where they write, write something along the side, you might need to flip it around. <clears throat> okay, now it's working. See, they're, they're always working on this website. You're, you are going to go into Antenati at some point if you try it any time in the next month, and it's going to be down. They, all, they bring it down, and they do updates because it's the you know, middle of the night to them, but in the middle of the afternoon to us, and we're trying to get in, and it doesn't do it. Um, invert. Hey, that makes it backwards. Is that going to help us? No. I'm telling you these things so you don't, if you accidentally click on them and go, what's going on here? Okay, you now know how to go back. Just do it again. Uh, brightness. See how, see the brightness is, okay, got, got rid of some of the dots that are in there. And does that help? No. <laughs> so, but that's, you know, again, knowing what that is. Contrast, similar. See, it's graying it out. Like I say, most of the time, you're not going to need to mess with any of this stuff, but in case you do, saturation, uh, I don't see anything happening there. Um, which one's that one? I think it's, I think I, because I've zoomed in on the web page, it's not letting me see it here. Click that to close those little scroll bars. Scale, Scala di Grigio, any translations, folks? Scale of gray. Gray scale, okay. Well, it's not giving me uh, anything, so that's not there. Oh, invert, okay. You may see this, you'll see more of this on family search when you look for Cook County stuff. You're gonna find death certificates where the ink is in white and the background's in black. And then when you print it, you're gonna eat up all your toner. <laughs> so you're better, you, you, if you have to save an image that looks like this, you wanna save it and use paint to invert it. But on this website, so your, your Italian records are almost never going to be like that. But if you accidentally do that, you now know how to change it back. And it looks like this just resets everything. It's, it <laughs> looks just like rotate left, but okay. So all the little subtle changes I made, this will change them back. So that's your best bet. You want that button in case you start messing with this, and you can do that. This X will make this whole little menu go away because I want to read Vito Campobasso there. And you see it's got a bunch of little, so it, that toggles that on and off, okay? Um, now here's, here's something that I mess around with that you're going to eventually want to do because I know that going one by one and the site is not the fastest site in the history of the world. It's not because of our internet here. You see, I clicked on it. I'm going to grab a swig of coffee because we still don't have an answer yet. Okay. Now you're overdoing it. Okay, a little, little slow there. So, so I got through the index, now it's another title page. So I'm on page four. So let's just say this marriage is in December. Do I really want to sit here and go through 44 pages at that speed? I think not. 
So, got a couple of things up here we need to look at. We got all those things there. We'll take them out of the way for a minute. So, this zooms supposed to maximize or minimize. Well, it's already maximized apparently. Right? There's the zoom in. So here, this little looks like sort of like a book. It's hard to tell. You click on that, and what it does is it will bring up a set of thumbnails. So you can either put the thumbnails at the bottom or on the right, or you can just put a gallery. Now these look just like the thumbnails on Family Search. You get a screen full of these when you first get into a set of records, and then you got to zoom in on one of these. Okay, so instead of going one by one by one, you notice it didn't have a place for me to type in 42, did it? Yeah. Family Search does. It's got that image number up in the corner that says do the, do that number to jump. You know. Now you're only going to get page numbers for this one 1878 Trajano marriage. You only have 44 pages to deal with, but you still can't jump to 41. This is the only way to do it, is to make them thumbnails and then double click on one of the images. Now you've jumped, in this case I jumped to 35, and I've got, it still, it, it still hasn't even loaded, there it goes, it cleared up. It's in November. so. You can put those thumbnails on the right if you want to. You see where they are here? Oh, that's good. Okay, so you can drag them down. So you still have a full image. And it, you got to drag it a couple times. I'm going to go back to the index because I forget what month my great-great-grandparents were married. I think it was in May. So it's Nicola, Nicola Santo Liquido. It loads a little bit faster if I've already been in. Okay, we see Pasquale Squello, Moravia Loner, we see Nicola Santo Liquido, and Maria Lucrezia Olivo. Uh, these names get just, again, the indexes are basically the same in Family Search and Antonati when you're searching for the name. So if the name is Miss transcribed in family search it's probably mistranscribed here okay so now it's record number 16 is that the page 16 no you got you either got to do a lot of math in your head or you got to do a little bit of that before and after stuff I was telling you about in a previous uh, talk so it's hard to tell you can see on the thumbnail that that's the title page. You can see by the big print, sort of. I, I know it, it's hard, but that's the beginning. And then the next one is a regular record. So this is my way of doing this. So that's the first record, one and two. There's two marriages on a page. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's my sneaky way. And I'm still way off. You know why I'm way off? Because they've got pages that repeat themselves. You're going to find that in Family Search, too. So I'm on record number 10. I want number 16. So I'm going to go to 12. 14, 16. I'm just going to click them fast here so we get to the brunt of what we're talking about. There we go. I would love to be able to give you a mathematical formula that says that after the first few pages of index, this is number one, there's two each, and then you take an algebraic formula and you're all going to go, no, I don't blame you. So again, these are, these are how the records, these are how marriage records look other um, the other handout and I don't want to go through trans translating every single one of these puppies but let's see I've got a page number in the bottom corner births come first marriages are okay 74 
So basically, page, okay, it's cut off at the bottom, but it's page 19. It says marriage, 1875 to 1945. Like I say, I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, but it's this is designed to be how you can figure out where the data is in these records. And where and, and where the data isn't in these records. So the good news is you don't have to guess again. You've got the town record type year. I'm at 1878 marriages for Trajano. I don't have to guess at that. In Family Search, you have to guess at that. You gotta go through that film and do all that. So this is marginally easier to find the pinpoint of where you're at. Okay. Now, one thing about marriage records. I'm kind of jumping around. I want to get focused back here. But one, one, on the birth and death records, you have a date up at the top that says he went to the mayor and they told him something happened. That happens here too, but there's not a subsequent second date here. There's just the one date. So it's basically when they got their marriage license. Does this necessarily mean that they went to the church that morning? We really don't know. You have to have church records to find that out. But in this case, April 27th. I said May. I was close. <laughs> if, I, if I use those cells for important stuff, it would really be cool. April 27th, 1878. At uh, 3.50 p.m. Again, this is when they went to the mayor. Fido Gianelli, mayor, syndical. So here's the groom which on the paper is, okay, this, this paper is actually a little bit later, and it does have an actual marriage date, numbers uh, 6, 7, and 8 on here in the red. That's, of course, my, my way of trying to separate what I'm talking about from their record. Um, yeah, you got to go all the way to number 9 to get to the groom. So I think this, believe it or not, this might have been a Mussolini add-on, to the form because the form didn't have uh, any subsequent date. It only had the one date, or it might be. This is 37. Okay, so this may this is okay. This is an addition that was made after Italy and the Vatican had their reconciliation in, in 1929. Okay, so they finally are giving you a place to say this is where the marriage took place. That's from the handout. This is in 1878. <coughs> Government couldn't care less where the marriage took place. As far as they were concerned, these people were legally married at this moment. So Nicola Santoliquido, 23, peasant farmer, born in Trigiano, lived in Trigiano, Celibe. Okay, this is where you would find if somebody's a widow or, or, or um, you know, you're not going to find the word divorce in here. <laughs> they didn't do that stuff. Celibe is a bachelor. Mm -hmm. And um, filio di genitori ignoti. No, the parents are unknown. And to this moment, my, his parents are unknown. I'm hoping a DNA uh, matchup will help me trigger down who his, uh, who his naughty parents were. Second, you see the two with the zero, that means second. There's a one with a zero up here. So secondary is the bride, Maria Lucrezia Olivo. So for some reason here, they're writing them in first name, last name order. It alternates, it goes all over the place. She's 20, Spin, uh, Spinner, is it? Filatrice, born in Trigiano, resident in Detto Comune, the same community. They could have written Trigiano with less work, but they wrote Detto Comune. Filia del Fu, daughter of the late Fu. When you see Fu, it means that that parent is deceased. Biagio, resident in Vita nel, hard to read here, but formerly lived here. And D.I., so the mother's alive, the father's deceased. Anna Quarta di Pane, and uh, she's also a or so or sewing, I guess. So that's, I mean, that's basically all the information on a marriage. There might be some um, um, witnesses down here at the bottom 
but honestly, in this, uh, let's see, oh, okay, there's some stuff about the, the marriage bands down here. Uh, the only time I've ever needed marriage bands is if the marriage records for that town for that year are missing. Then I have to use the bands because it's all I've got. And I can't get a good marriage date from them. So that's the only time I've ever needed the marriage <laughs> bands. And sometimes, the only, the only neat thing once in a while is I find people in the marriage bands that are not in the marriage records. Mm -hmm. So they went to the, they said, we declare our intention to get married. And uh, the father of the bride said, over my dead body. <laughs> yeah, they would post that on the walls of the city. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It's, I remember them. I remember them being listed in the uh, bulletin for church. Yeah. They would they would have second bands, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, it's, I mean, so we're, you know, we're in a small town, and most of us are going to be in small towns. And if two people are getting married, well, if somebody says, hey, those two are second cousins of each other, you know, maybe maybe we need to pull pull the plug on that puppy. So you got all that kind of stuff. First cousins. For, well, for, first cousins, yeah, that's. But they probably that they probably know. Um, but yeah, that, so but again, that, that it's been. I've actually found marriage. I found marriage licenses in Cook County where they filled out the license, and then the marriage was never. Um, not uh, what's the word. Consummated. Yeah, I don't want to say consummated. That's not what I mean. It, it's the, it was not uh, so, solemn, solemnized, I guess would be the right word. Um, yeah, my grand aunt and uh, her future husband were both 16, really in love, and they got a marriage license, and her father. <laughs> her father smacked them both into their 20s when they finally did get married when they eloped <laughs> so but you get you, that that's what you find in the band so I, i'm not I, I say don't use the bands all right well you know you can play in there if you want to but you're not going to find any information there that's not in the marriage record so so again like i say this um this thing here um you can hit off and it'll get rid of those images for you. Like I said, that, that kind of stuff is all explained in the handout because it's going to be the same set of buttons for every screen. doesn't matter which one. Left and right, zoom in, zoom out, all that contrast and brightness stuff. <coughs> Again, you should probably not need much of it. Um, they, quick story, when, when Family Search started to digitize their microfilms, they came up with a brilliant system. They fed the microfilm through a machine. It would take a picture of the film, and then the computer would do a bunch of stuff to the image to clean it up and make it nice and easy to read. And so they made a wonderful announcement at one of their conferences out in Salt Lake City. This is 20 some years ago. And they said that, well, this is going, it's an automated process, so you don't need a bunch of people to do it. We set up multiple machines, and it'll all be done in 130 years. <laughs> Hand to God. Um, then I think at a, at a later conference, somebody said, it wasn't me, I didn't go, somebody said, 130 years, are we serious about this? Oh no, our sons and grandsons will take care of it for, you know, no, 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 130 years. So they, they spent, they said, right, let's spend some time improving the process. So everything, all two and a half million microfilms are 100% digitized already. We don't have to wait 130 years. So that, but when they first announced that, I, I just looked at that and said, I'm not known for my patience. <laughs> so I better start jogging if I want to live to be 170, 180 years old. I hope my eyesight holds out. So, so point is, is that the images are very cleaned up and um, rarely need to be, you know, they're, they're, you're going to find images where on the corner it's going to say colored paper. <clears throat> Down here it'll be a big print colored paper. And those might be a little bit dark. You might need to use that brightness stuff to mess around with it. But that means that even the photographer recognized it. So he reset the settings on his camera and made it better. Okay. So I want to go back. 
So we've got, uh, let's just go all the way home. I'm gonna change it back into English. You just hover over it. If you click on it, it just does it. You gotta hover over it and then drag down to the other language. So I'm gonna do Carbonara. Now they used to have it where it would pop up with a, dr a drop down. That was, there was a drop down when I wrote this handout. And now there isn't. So don't be surprised that some of this stuff's not the same when you get it elsewhere. This button here, registries with nominatives. I'm going to click that button. By flagging registries with nominatives, the search results will be limited to registers to which deeds and names are linked. So these are ones that have actual searchable records. Carbonara. Registries with nominatives. Carbonara Depot, 1806. That's interesting, but that's not mine. Archive, Archivo di Stato di Mantova. And I said I was looking for Carbonara Bari. So Mantova's got some stuff searchable, but Bari does not. Okay, so that's the only time that archive thing matters because I typed Carbonara. Should I have to type Carbonara di Bari, Carbonara di Po, or whatever? There's four, I think. So just know that, again, going in. But th those are the only the ones that have searchable names. So I'm gonna leave that in. Typically, I mean, maybe the first time you go in, put in the name of your town, click that button, and just see if anything's searchable out there. Um, I'm going to hit search, though, because I want to show one with multiple. Oh, there we go. Bari, 546 Carbonaras in Bari, Carbonara uh, film sets. We've got a, some Caserta. We've got some Avellino. There's the Mantova. We've got a little squib in Padova. So that's why those matter. So this, if you leave, if you don't click one of these puppies, then you're going to be you're, you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff coming up in the search results that is, is not going to be germane to you, and you're going to look at it. Oh, 1878 marriage, Carbonara, and it's going to turn out to be the one in Avellino, and you're going to find your family there. So in this case, I click Bari. So you see again, whatever you've selected on the left becomes a little blue, dark blue thing over here on the right. And... Okay, now here's, you gotta know a little bit about the geography because Carbonara uh, got, actually got swallowed up into the city of Bari in the late 1920s. And so did a little town nearby called Chegli del Campo. So Carbonara Chegli are sometimes cataloged as um, uh, subsets of the city of Bari, and sometimes they're cataloged as their own town name. I'm not telling you that to teach you Carbonara. I'm telling you that that if your town might have gone through some name changes or other uh, kinds of things that you know about, you might run into that in the cataloging too. Okay, so in this case, here let's take another look at typology. We've got 12 choices here. Um, this Cittadinanzi, I'm sorry, my pronunciations, my, my parents, my, my Polish dad, my Italian mother did not talk to me in any language except broken English. You're afraid we've not run out of broken English. Angry English, I should say. But citizenship is what it means. See, this kind of, this kind of record, I've never seen anybody written in them, even though they went microfilmed. They microfilmed empty pages on most of these. It's supposed to be people leaving for America, but they don't have a whole lot of that. You would think they would have all the 17-year-olds that they wanted to catch uh, because they left right before they got drafted at 18, but they don't know. I, I, I have heard the stories from people who went back to visit when they were in their 20s to see their parents, and it's like, we've been looking for you. Some of you have heard the same story. So... I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Matrimony Indice just to show you that it's a separate. So see, we have Matrimony Indice, Archivo di Stato Bari, Carbonara. 
you see this remove all and again we're in English and it says rim tutti. that's not English just know that this site is gonna flip languages on you left right and sideways and if you're hundred percent bilingual or even 50% bilingual you'll find your way around and if you're like me and you really don't know your language I can read records but this other stuff sometimes is you know so I'm going to show you an older index view the register you can either click on the name or click view the register either way I hope we can zoom this in enough zoom in this way so the index is prior to 1866 the ones I the one I showed you earlier actually goes from 1866 to 19 whatever um, they look exactly like that it's just groom name bride name number that's it you might get a father's name in there you might get both parents names in there if you're lucky Frequently, it's going to be just bride and groom. Again, that should be enough. If the same groom, three, three or four marriages in the same town the same year, well, but that's not the bride I'm looking for, wrong year. Let's go to the other, let's go to the year before that. Because the, the fact is going to be, you might, when you start this, if you're just getting started, you're going to know the birth date of your father, your grandfather from some other source. But you're probably not going to know when his parents got married. I mean, you know, if you were at their 50th wedding anniversary party, you might stand a chance, you know, but, but, but you're not, it's not likely. So you're going to be, all right, well, my grandparent was born in 1880. His oldest sister was born in 1870. So you want to start with 1870 and work your way back. Yes, start with the year that the kid was born, not because they were a little early uh, although they might have been but it's just a good a good way to be fairly certain that you're gonna you're gonna cover it you're gonna get an occasional marriage that happened a year after the birth of the first kid yes that happened back there it happened everywhere um, but I wouldn't spend a lot of time searching well he was born 1870 so I'm gonna check 1880 marriages it's not worth your time start with 1870 and work your way backward for finding a marriage now in this particular Almost all the marriage indexes uh, from 1809 through 1865 look a lot like this. Same thing as um, the other, that the A's are together, the B's are together, the C's are together, but they're not in purely al alphabetical order. So, Abenanti Saverio and Di Cosola Giovanna. Okay, so here's your first married couple, and there's nobody else with an A. The second one starts with a B. In this, in these indexes, 1809 on, you get the parents of both of them. And that's what you want the marriage indexes for. If you're, I, I encourage anybody who's really starting out with this, it's one thing to get copies of each of these birth and death records and all that stuff, but the marriage records are where it's at because you're going to get four new ancestors every time you find a new marriage record. If you want to jump backward, that's the way to do it the quickest. So that's, you know, I mean, I, I've, this is not bragging on me. This is, I've just been doing this for too long, but uh, somebody, uh, a friend of mine who used to live near my friends and I used to sing karaoke with us. We all sing karaoke together, we did. And then she disappeared from our lives for a while. Um, and then she married, uh, she married an Italian-American guy, she's Jewish. And uh, she married him and um, then I hadn't heard from her in three years and she says, hey Dan, are you still doing that family tree stuff? And I'm, I didn't know at the moment that she married an Italian, I thought, Okay, I don't know anything about shtetls. I don't know anything about researching Jewish stuff. So I was afraid to answer the question. I said, well, I do, but it's, you know. And then she told me that she married this guy, and he was Italian. I said, right up my alley. I said, don't tell me anything. I don't even, want, don't, don't even give me his name. I'll, you know. 
And I just, so I found his, I found him, I found his mother, his father, found him through death or uh, uh, death notices or whatever. So I, I just took, I just went marriage records, marriage records, marriage records, and I sent them about three hours later a four generations oh pedigree. God. Again, not, this is not bragging, this is not bragging. It's just that this is the quickest way of doing it. And yeah, needless to say, they freaked out. And then I made sure she knew, no, I can't do this for your side. Money, I don't know, I don't know how to read those. Uh, these I can read. So, uh, so now I'm their buddy. But um, it's nice because, like I say, here the, the the bride and groom. Now you want to don't ever work just with the indexes. That's the other thing. You get to hear that. Oh, look, I've got their names. I got the names of the parents. I got the date of the marriage, 16th May, 1850. Great. Now I got to go find the rest of them. No, find the record first. Get the ages if you can from these parents. Sometimes they're on there. Okay. Um, because otherwise. Where where do you search? You know how old is is Michael forty or twenty? Is Angela Minolasina is she forty two or eighteen? You don't know. You want to go to the record and get that stuff. It's there. Okay. So um, there was something else I was going to tell you about these. See again the the bees. You got Bo Bozi Barata Barletta. Brata. So again, they're mixed together. Oh, I know what I'm going to tell you. Okay, what's the record number? Well, this is very important. Very important. Again, and this is doesn't matter which website you're using, because it's the same records. You see, it's it's a one. That's a two. That's a three. That's a four. That's a five. That's a six. What are the odds? that these people got married sequentially in alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> that would be if I could, you know, if I could throw, uh, you know, if I could throw a $5 bet to Vegas on that one and get six in a row, okay, I can't, I can't even hit a, whatever, a two horse, less than a trifecta, I can't even do that, so. Excuse me, what page are you on in the handout? Um, well, I would be on the index, this is on the index page, page two. I mean, it's not, this is not the same exact record, but they look the same. It's a little bit of a share, shaded. Actually, no, I'm sorry, that's births. I want marriages. No, let's try page four. Index to marriages, 1809 to 1865. So how do you go to the next step? Well, what I'm, what I'm explaining is that we need what record number this is, and the index does not tell us. It's just a sequential number for their own tracking. Okay? My point is, is that if the first marriage here was record 12, the second marriage is record 19. The third marriage is record 41. The fifth, if the numbers skip around, that number is the marriage number that you want to find. If they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that number does not help you. You know, you know what I'm saying is that if you go to marriage number one looking for Severio Avenanti, now you should be tipped off by the fact that it's May the 16th. That's not the first marriage of the year. Okay, so use the date and skip around to get to the marriage record. That's that's something I didn't cut. Well, we didn't talk about anything before 1875 in the previous three talks. Today was supposed to be Advanced Topics Day, and um, so it is mixed in with Antonati. So the point is, is that use the date that they give you in this index. They didn't give you a date in the other index, did they? They gave you a number only. That number you can always trust. Number 39 is 39, 16 is 16. In these indexes, it's not record one. Go to May 16. You have, may have to bounce around a little bit to get to it. Is it I, I, I hope I'm not losing anybody on that, but it's very, very important to... I would. My suggestion would just be that if it's before 1865, use the date only. 
don't worry about the number because it's not going to help you. How do you go from the index to the actual record? The in, the, in this case, this is an indice that was separate from, i got to zoom back out here. Okay. So, results list. Let's go back to what we were searching for. Now, this, this was only, the index was all by its little self. Remember, sometimes it's by itself, sometimes it's mixed with the records. So I'm going to check, uh, check that X to get rid of that so that I can pull up the marriage itself. Okay, that was 1850. So you can click on typology here if you want to. Matrimony, I'm just going to go ahead and click that. Do I want to sit and weed through 110 marriage things? No. Actually, 1850 is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that. What was it, May 16th? Mm -hmm. Now see, it's got part one and part two. Let's start with part one. Now can you, you know, there's okay. 69 pages. Now what order are they likely to be in? This is in chronological order. Okay. So we need May. Okay. I'm gonna zoom in again here. So I got the first marriage is January the 18th. We got a long way to go, don't we? Um, so, 69 pages. I, I guess I'm not sure if six, the last one is the six, is the December 31st stuff. But I'm gonna click on that little book and I'm gonna put those to the right just so I can jump around here. So let's go halfway. Yeah, it should be go halfway through. About, yeah, let's go to 30. It's May, right? You got to kind of just, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, it don't cost nothing, I guess, is my, okay, to search. So April 26th is May 16th. Okay, well, th this is this is the thing I, that annoys me the most about this website just be aware of it. I zoomed in on that other record mm -hmm. and I could read it. Mm -hmm. And then every time I go to the next page or the previous page, it zooms right back to where it started. Mm -hmm. I hate that. Mm -hmm. Hate it. Now this, this doesn't look like a marriage record, does it? This is a continuation of the other marriage record. Mm -hmm. It's actually four pages, page two, page three, and that's explained, you know, the, the, the fact that it's a fourth page is explained in the handout. Like I say, there's not enough time to go through all these translations. So we got April 28th. So I know that I can do two clicks to get to the, in this particular case, to get to the next record. Look, May 16th. Hey, not bad. It's marriage number 15. That's not what that index said, did it? So 1850, 16th of May. Uh, again, went to a mayor. I, I, I marked on all the translations who the mayor is, and that's just because, well, when I first started, I thought that guy was the father of everybody in town. <laughs> <laughs> what did I know? Turns out, well, <laughs> He was father of a couple of people, but it wasn't everybody. Why did they change the name? Okay, so just know that that's, because it'll say Sindako sometimes, and sometimes it'll be something else. And so I put in the uh, handout, it's a mayor or subordinate. I didn't want to put the word flunky, but that's basically what it means. Somebody else was handling the paperwork that morning. So in the uh, town of Carbonara Bari, Saverio Abenanti, remember him from the index? Okay, so he's 22. See, that's why you go to the record, don't just trust the index. The index didn't give his age, did it? So 1850, 22. So he's born about 1828. Um, I would not, how do I put this? Because the marriage is in May. Is he born in 1828 or 1827? You really don't know. Start at 28 and work your way backward. And if he's not in there, 
1826, you might want to go forward, go to 1829. Maybe there's a slight error. The ages on the marriage records are amazingly accurate. One wouldn't think so, but they, they are pretty good. Um, so he's son of Michael Abenanti and Angela Minolacina, and neither one of them gives an age. Okay, but at least we know when he was born. So we know that 1828, once we find his birth date, we can maybe go backward and find marriages um, from 1828, seven, and go backward that way. Um, so Giovanna di Casola is the bride. She's 18, she's born in Carbonara. I mean, that's very important when you find a marriage record. <coughs> You got to mark down, bless you. The um, you have to mark down the town that they came from. If they didn't come from that town, you're going to look in the wrong place for the birth record. Um, so 18 from 1850 is 1832. There's way too much math in this class. I know that, um, but that's you. You will need to. Okay, look. Get on your phone and use the calculator if you don't do it in your head. But. Um, so in this particular case, it's got her father, Michael, and her mother, Vincenza Morisco. Now this also helps that you can, you can see, the, you know, you got a Michael and an Angela, and you got a Michael and a Vincenza. So that means that they're gonna have only one kid named for the grandfather, because you can't name them both. So you get that. Now let me show you on the right-hand side that on the top it says act of the solemn promise of the celebration of marriage and indication of the celebration canonica that's a church wedding so they throw that in there they don't throw it in in the later years so that's again that might be an issue with the um, church and state church and state uh, recognizing uh, each other's activities exactly so here in this case it does say May 16th. That that's another it's another important point of the index is that that date that's on the index might be the church date, might be the civil date. Mm -hmm. Which one's it gonna be? So, I don't know. <laughs> you heard a lot of that today. Yeah. That's what makes these advanced topics. So that's why again you've got to I mean you're you're gonna look at May. Trust me when I tell you that you're going to find somebody May 16th of 1850 in your index, and you're going to go to May 16th of 1850 in your records and not find them and go, what the, okay? Now, just to clarify, this is something you could do at home in your underwear. At home, underwear, <laughs> at home, underwear, Antonati. <laughs> Family History Center, not in your underwear, family search. Just to clarify. Yes, I, I use the term bunny slippers, but tomato, tomato, okay. That's, that's why Antonati is so important, is that you can do this there, but um, again, bunny slippers, four in the morning, underwear, whatever. So, but this has got the church record, and so, Della Chiesa di Santa Maria del Fonte. Okay, now, this, this is very important at, uh, when you're starting your research if you don't know the name of the mother church of your hometown. So you might get that from one of these old records. Um, so if you, uh, you can find it on the internet probably, but this is also a good way of knowing that this is, that's where the marriage took place. So, is that where the marriage took place, uh, or is it where the record of the marriage? This is where the church marriage actually took place, is Santa Maria del Fonte Church in Carbonara, Italy, the Bari. But the re this is a, still a civil record. It's not a church record. So the, the civil record is located in the Bari Provincial Archive, which is why it's on this website. This website's not going to give you, unfortunately for all of us, uh, church, actual church records. They're, if, they're, if you're lucky enough to have them on family search, you're lucky. 
and I would always suggest to anybody, I, I, again, presuming that you're not ready to go back before 1809 when the civil records come to a dead halt, or 1820 if you're Sicilian, they come to a halt. Um, I don't know why they didn't start up till 20, 1820 in Sicily, but that's typically the case. Um, you're gonna need, when you wanna go back before then, the first thing I would do is get on social media as much as you may not want to and look for groups of people that are researching those towns and say, who's got church? Has anybody gone to the church and copied any records from the church? Mm -hmm. Because that's the next step. I mean, if you could do that at home, underwear, internet, and not, you know, not to say don't fly to Italy, but you may fly all the way to Italy and they may shut the door in your face. There's no guarantee they're gonna let you look at the church records. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky. Not everybody is as lucky. Um, so point being, when you reach that point, don't do it now. If, you're, if, you are, if you don't have your tree back to 1809 on every branch, you got plenty to do with Antonati and Family Search, okay? Um, so you, you know, when you're ready, when you have all that stuff done, I didn't look well, there wasn't social media when I was ready for it, but I get on those genealogy groups and go, okay, who's got, there is, there's a website called, um, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, I don't remember the exact name of it. Okay, okay I guess I do, italianparishrecords.org. This, this, there's a very, very small percentage of the records on here, because in all honesty, I'm not sure that we're supposed to be, I, I, I have not given them mine but I don't know that we're supposed to necessarily put stuff on here. But when you get to this point uh, where you're before 1809 and you're like, I can't do anything else. I'm stuck now, you know. This is a place to look. So I'm going to pull up Puglia. Bari. So some people have put stuff in <coughs> Conversano, Index of Marriages, 1590 to 1860. It's pretty cool if your family's from Car Conversano. Um, I do have some ancestry there. Sonicandro, source records range from Italian church records dating back to 1576. Just know that this stuff's out there. Um, but then you get to learn Latin. <laughs> Lots of fun there. Um, so again, I'm just showing you Bari, and I'm just showing you. It's, it, I, this is probably not in the handouts. You might want to just write down ItalianParishRecords.org. I'll leave it up there for a minute. Um, like I said, it, I need. I honestly need. I need parish records to supplement missing civil records, and I have not yet had the luck of finding anybody. When I when I went to Italy, I didn't know those civil records were missing, so I didn't go to try to get the 1925 death records. But I need the 1925 death records. From August to December, they were not microfilmed. Somebody missed them. Okay. I think we need to take a break. I think we're right at that point. Okay. So, uh, time out. Uh, get some refreshments and come back in about 10 minutes. Men's room is upstairs, right? Can I show you something? Yeah. Well, like, I mean.